Alright, hey guys. Um, well, this is my second attempt at making this fucking video, cause, uh, <laughs> cause, um, I just made one, and I thought it went well, and then it turns out the sound just cut off halfway, and I think it's cause I uh, it was using wireless headphones, and they had like a weird timer on them, where it's like, if you don't hear any, if they don't hear any sound on the PC, it'll turn off. <laughs> so now I'm plugged in, so, uh, we're gonna hope oh, this, this day works. So, this video is about cheating in Counter-Strike, and uh, I'm trying to make it not as long as my last one, <laughs> but uh, point one, VAC, um, I see a lot of people on HLTV and Reddit, they kind of post a lot about how like, well, if someone's not VAC banned, it means they don't cheat, well, now, the problem with this is VAC has never been the like authority on cheating, it's never been something that was effective at, high, at at catching private cheats. Now, even when it caught SF and Kaylee, it only caught them because ESCA gave them the means to do so. Um, so, VAC shouldn't even really be in the discussion about catching actual cheaters, especially ones that are paying for them. Um, ESCA, ESL, SIVO, these clients, some of them better than others, um, have a much greater chance of catching them, in my opinion. Um, now, that isn't to say that Valve are bad for only banning people from majors that get caught by VAC, because you have to understand their position is, they don't know if the secondary clients that caught these people, um, actually caught them, or there's a malfunction in the client, or there's some sort of agenda by them, you know, like, they have no way to verify that, but if you're banned by VAC, they know in their system, they caught you, they have the data, they can look at it, they can see it's right, and they can ban you. So I get it from that standpoint, I mean, it makes sense. I'm just saying that, um, I'm just saying that I, I, I don't think VAC is, is the way you should look at, at if someone is clean or not. Like, if you pay for pri private cheats, you're gonna get past VAC. That's just pretty much a fact. <laughs> for a while, at least. For a long while. Um, secondly, the Kaylee uh, SF bans. I think we deserve to know more information about it by now. I think the way Valve did it, they did a poor job. Um, when they banned SF and Kaylee before the major, I thought that was a bad move. I thought they should have waited and brought everyone to the major and let them play out the group stage, or at least one match each, and maybe bring in two reserve teams, kind of like Dota does, and just say that they're like wildcard teams, so that if there's a visa issue or um, a team has a player get sick or, you know, gets disqualified, then you have backup teams. I don't think it would have even raised any alarms. You could just point to Dota and say we're taking that um, route. Anyways, now, would it have made the tournament look bad? Yeah, it definitely would have looked bad if they banned people at a tournament, but this isn't about making the game look good. It's about keeping the integrity of the game, and it would have been nicer to catch as many people if other people were, were cheating as possible. By banning those two, you basically scared anyone from being dumb enough to cheat at that land or improving their cheats to not get caught. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, now, I actually scrimmed SF before that major that they got banned at, and me and Shroud played them on Mirage, and we were both like, yo... I, we actually think this guy's cheating. And Sean was like, shut the fuck up. Like, this guy's not cheating. He's going to a major in a week. <laughs> and this isn't like a slight against Sean or saying like me and, and Shroud are like really smart. Or like we're pretty fucking smart. But anyways, it, it's more about the fact that like most people are going to assume that players going to big events aren't going to cheat. You know, like, you're already going to the event. You've already made it. You're on a pro team. You get salary, blah, blah, blah. So you can see that even pros are giving people the benefit of the doubt. The community gives people the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying giving people the benefit of the doubt is wrong, and I'm not trying to make this video as a witch hunt to, to point out players that aren't already banned. That's all I'm going to do is point towards, like, SF and Kaylee. But um, 
I think there's more to it than that. Like these two players both cheated to get known. In my opinion, there's an older video on YouTube of them both cheating at a smaller French land, um, which is pretty obvious that they're like aimbotting slash wall hacking or doing some weird aim lock stuff. I don't, I don't know, but it's pretty obvious if you see the it's on Inferno, the old version of Inferno, and it's like pretty obvious they're cheating. Now. What I think Valve needs to give the community is to tell us where, I guess SF doesn't matter as much, but where did Kaylee actually cheat? Did he cheat in matchmaking? Did he cheat in deathmatch? Did he cheat in his own private server? Did he cheat in the ESCA pug? You know what I mean? Like, did he cheat in a pro match but online? Was he cheating online in pro matches? Did he cheat at LANs? If he cheated at LAN, it changes a lot of things because everyone right now is assuming that no one cheats on LAN or most people. People are just like, oh yeah, well, no one would cheat on LAN. It's too risky. Well, if he did, then it, it changes the argument a bit. And I mean, they know where he cheated. So I think it's I think it would be nice to know that. I understand that developers don't want to give away their secrets of how they caught people and make it easier for the other coders to bypass them but i do think that's like an important thing um to talk about and i think it's been long enough that i think we deserve to know uh where he cheated um i think that's important um now after they were both banned they started doing different tests on at the majors, at least, not at every event. I think ESL does it at most events, even that aren't majors, but um, right now it's mostly just majors and ESL. And I guess ESL is ESL now. But um, So basically, what they do is they... Now, maybe they've updated this a little bit. I haven't been to the last couple majors, but the, the two that they tested me at, it was basically like I gave them my gear, put a little, like, um, little... Um, Stick white stickers on them with your name so your gear doesn't get confused if you use the same mouse of your teammates, blah, blah, blah. And they take it in a box the day before the event, and they test it. How are they testing these things? Are they plugging in the mouse and being like, yeah, this is a mouse. Yeah, this keyboard types. Yeah, these headphones have sound. Like, Are they looking at the driver signatures and comparing them to the manufacturer's drivers like file size and going more in depth and looking if anything's been modified somehow i doubt that i somehow i really doubt they're going in depth and and i'm not trying to sound smart i have no idea what you should be testing for i really don't but i do know that well, i don't know but i do feel like they're not testing as thoroughly as they should be just based on what they do with our phones like they so when you sit down before an event they'll take your phones and put them in in a box including your managers which is good and you get them back after the games but it's not like they pat you down and check like you could have multiple phones i could have a hundred phones on me like they take here's my phone here take my phone here's my here's my phone take my phone and like i could just have 10 more like you know what i mean like it's not it's not like they're checking you like uh, it's not like I couldn't have a, 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 I couldn't have a mouse, give them a mouse, and then bring another mouse with me and switch my cheat mouse in with the one that they checked and use it. Like, it's not like they're that thorough. Like, they're not doing that. So, I'm not saying people are doing this, but I'm just saying that, like, it's not as sick as you guys think. It's not like this infallible system. Like, I see some people post on Reddit, like, no, nah, they check gear, like, they're doing all these tests. They're not as strict as you think. Even the admins behind you watching, for one, I don't know if these guys even play Counter-Strike sometimes. They might be from a different game. So, that in itself is a problem. And then, uh, secondly, it's like, it's not hard to get by an admin. Like, there's one admin for a team, even if there's two. Like, what, if I'm on C9, I'm in a major, right? And, uh, and, and I want to cheat. And, like, maybe I don't tell... Maybe if my team's in on it, it's even easier. But, like, let's say, like... Uh, most of my team's not in I just set up. I, I set everything up. And I just wait for someone on my team to ask a question or have a problem. Someone always has a problem. Like, there's always, like, my monitor's not turning out. My monitor color's weird. There's always some weird issue. As soon as that guy goes over there, then you do it. It's, it's not hard. He There's not like a suck second admin that comes and watches you. Dude, I could probably 
fucking if they if they had USB capabilities, I bet you I could put a USB on in front of an admin and have a thing that says cheats.exe and drag it to my desktop and double click it and play a match. I bet you I could do that at some lens. Like I I, I don't even think it would be that hard, <laughs> honestly. And that might sound ridiculous, but that's just my experience being to many lands. Like, they're just not that thorough. Now, I'm one of these people that I set up without my config. I don't send events to my config. I just do it manually. It's pretty easy for me. I just literally go in, and I just type my stuff in really quick. I know my crosshair. I know my raw input and my sensitivity and stuff. It takes me, like, it's actually faster for me to type in all my stuff than it is to find the folder that they put it in, which always hidden between, like, 37 other folders where you have to, like, access an FTP that they give you the IP to. So I just do it manually. It's honestly faster. I'm the first one to set up on my team every time, assuming I'm not helping someone else <laughs> do something. So that's the way I do it. And, like, I'm, I'll be typing stuff fran frantically into console, like, just fucking flying and like these guys don't know what i'm typing i don't know if there's any commands that you can actually do that give you an advantage in console there probably isn't so maybe this is a moot point but my main point is they're not like checking anything they don't know what i'm typing so i don't know that's just another thing um my other point was is people that are like oh well you know or I guess it's not another point, but another another thing I was gonna say is like if you ever watch a show like Mr. Robot or look at like some of these brilliant coders, um, like Wow Glider, um, you know these people can get by like massive security uh, like companies. They can get into like NASA, the CIA. They've hacked into like everything. And, I mean, imagine someone with, like, a lot of talent that decided, hey, you know what, I want, like, safe, easy money. Like, hacking into, like, you know, the CIA or the government is probably not the safest thing long term. But, you know, coding cheats and taking 10% of someone's prize money to ensure that he doesn't get caught, that's now incentive for you to always keep updating your cheat so that he doesn't get caught and wins you money because you're making profit off of what he makes. I'm not even saying this is what people will do. That's just what I think would be smart for a coder. And as a player, it actually incentivizes the person coding the, the cheat for you to continue updating it. And, and you know, like that, that's just one of those things where like you kind of want both parties to be happy at all times. If you just pay someone a flat fee for a cheat, he's not going to keep updating it. Uh, you're going to have to either pay him like monthly or, you know, prize money would be a decent way of going about it. So, I mean, you have someone that's like really knowledgeable and, you know, he's not getting caught by VAC. You're not probably even going to get caught by UCA. Like the coders are generally a step ahead of the security teams in, in the real world. Um, now, going to Wow Glider. Wow Glider has been around. Well, I actually don't. I haven't. I haven't looked at it lately, so I don't. I, I believe they got sued. I'm not sure exactly what happened with that case, but um, but yeah, like with Wow Glider, it was like one to three dudes. I believe it started off as one guy. I think he had a little bit of help at the end. I'm not entirely sure. Um. When, when when he was creating this, he was getting by like millions of dollars being pumped into Warden, which was Blizzard's version of VAC. And, you know, it was just him and maybe one or two other guys. And they got back, they got, over, they, they, they got past it week after week, update after update. They got past it. There was a couple band waves that, that, that caught some people. But I remember my friend, he was botting during a, a ban wave. Like, literally, he was botting during a ban wave. And he's like, I didn't even get banned. And I was like, how? <laughs> and he was using the cheat that got caught. So, um, maybe he just got lucky. I don't know. But my point is that, like, you know, you you have these big games that people hate bots in MMOs. That's a, that's a fact. People fucking hate them. And this guy's just getting by it for by himself, basically, for years. And their base, best course of action was to sue them. Like, that was the best way they could do it, they just sue them. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess that's a little bit off topic. Another thing is, is uh, one thing that made me think about making this video was just kind of, um, I've been starting to watch podcasts on the way to the gym. I bike to the gym. It's like 15, 20 minutes 
probably 15 minutes there, 20 minutes back. Back is uphill. <laughs> That's why it's longer. Well, at least, uh, at least I get my cardio in. Um, but yeah, so I've been listening to podcasts because music just started hurting my brain. You know, it's it's hard to always have new music. <laughs> so I've been listening to some Joe Rogan podcasts, and I was listening to this one um, uh, about a guy that actually got arrested for helping uh, a bunch of people in Olympics and uh, sports like the Major League Baseball uh, use performance enhancing drugs. And he was basically saying that, like, um, the Olympics, like, basically knows people are, like, doping and stuff. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? I mean, um, he was basically saying that, like, they do, like, these randomized tests, right? So, say the Olympics is in, like, one year, and you're preparing for whatever you're doing. Maybe you're a cyclist, maybe you're, like, doing... Olympic lifts or something, whatever. Diff- different people need different stuff, right? So I believe cyclists, because I watched the one with Lance Armstrong, is they need... Uh, it, it helps when they have more, like, uh, oxygen in their blood, so they want, like, higher white blood calcium or something. I could be wrong. I mean, I... <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so they, they do certain types of drugs that increase um, the oxygen in the blood, and, you know, it's a performance enhancer. They probably do some other stuff that I'm unaware of. But my point is that, like, they do this kind of stuff before the event, and uh, some of these drugs will be out of your system by the time you perform, right? So, basically, you can... If you're training for strength, you could do, like, certain types of steroids, gain a bunch of mass, gain a bunch of strength, um, peak, and then stop the drugs, and then by the time the competition comes, you won't test positive for anything. And... When that happens, you still have gained the benefits from the increased strength, and you'll still compete and place better than someone that didn't do it. So what they do is they do randomized tests, and um, basically you have like a three-strike period, whereas like they can randomly come at any time. So like they call you and they're like, "Hey, uh, we want you to come do a random test," and you're like, "Maybe you're on nothing at this point," and you're like, "Great!" Like I'm like, you go and do the test, you pass. Maybe you're pumped full of the gills with just like tons of drugs. Um, I've heard that, that he's saying that a lot of these guys are using upwards of like seven to nine different compounds in their body. I don't know what all of them are because that's a lot, but I'm sure that not all of them are illegal. <laughs> and so if you're, if you're just pumped full of all these different drugs to give you an advantage, you're going to fail the test. So what they do is they just don't show up. They just do a no show and the Olympics don't go back the next day. What they do is they just mark you as an X. So as long as you don't get three X's before the Olympics, you're fine. So, um, yeah. And then I think if you fail, you get like a year ban or something. But my my point is like if the Olympics are like that lenient, it's such a big thing. Then like, um, why would Valve and, and other people be more strict? Like you have to think about it. When all this cheating stuff happened, it was like on the rise of CS. It was like when CS was just like becoming a big sports. Like what or big esport? Like what happens if everyone got banned? Like the, yeah, they banned SF and Kaylee, but what would have happened? And I don't want this. I don't want you guys to fucking take this and be like, oh my god, he's saying that these teams are cheating. But like, let me just let's just say like, Fnatic's the best team at the world in the world at the time. They're beating everyone. What happens to the game? If Fnatic is banned for cheating at that time, well, that kind of will just be all over, you know, Reddit, HLTV, and popular news sites are going to be like, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, um, top teams caught for cheating, all the people that win are cheating, and and it's going to be like tons of negativity, tons of bad publicity, it's going to possibly kill the sport, kind of like how... Um, the doping killed cycling. Like, no one cares about cycling anymore. As soon as all that stuff came out, it, it basically killed it. And the same thing could have happened to CSGO is if you ban, like, the top two or three teams. And at the time, Fnatic was the best team, so I'm not saying they were cheating. I'm just saying they were the team winning everything. So if they happened to be the one to get banned, it would have been terrible. Now, SF and Kaylee getting banned, they were, like, on the outskirts of the teams. Like, SF wasn't even in competition to win the LAN. And Kaylee was, on a, on a, was the highest profile one, and he was pretty good. Uh, like, their team was solid. They could have maybe won, but they weren't, like, favorites. They weren't favorites to win. They weren't, like, top five even, I don't think, at the time. So, 
I don't know. It's it also you have to take into consideration like would Valve not ban someone to save the game? And when it comes to money, you never know what decisions people make. And I'm not accusing Valve or anyone of anything. I'm just saying that every decision that people they make has an impact, right? Like whether it's banning people or not banning people. So. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything that I wanted to mention, but um, yeah, I guess that's it. So let the hate roll out.